<laughs> Alpha Draconian Alpha Draconians are a race of Draconians in ufology, refer to sapient reptilians whose survival is dependent as an empire. They have also been known as the Seeker, also spelled Chekar. Origins The Alpha Draconians predated humans by well over a hundred million years. They are Draconians who were seated here by another mysterious and vastly superior reptilian race, loosely identified as the Tiamatians. They appeared in our reality from another universe, somewhere between what the Hindu Sanskrit texts refer to as Lokas and Talas. The point of entry into our known universe is suspected to be through a gateway at Thuban or Alwaid. Propagation on Earth initially began with the seeding of dinosaurs. As Soria-blooded dinosaurs evolved into Iguanodontia, dinosaur intelligence became more sapient. Eventually, they became upright and walked as bipedals, known as Saurians. As they became more sapient, they also developed telepathy. Over the course of millions of years, their societies became highly advanced to the point that the Saurians developed a space program even more sophisticated than what we know to be NASA. The Saurians may have been aware of their history, and identified, or perhaps longed to find, the Alpha Draconian Stargate that their progenitors came from. In time, these advanced Saurians became known as the Seeker, who developed what ufologists know today as the Draconian Empire. Empire The Seeker are incredibly adept and considerably intelligent as a species. Their clairvoyant abilities are quite well known, and it is believed all Alpha Draconians have telepathic abilities. It is also suspected that some of the elites have an unusual ability to see across and move to other planes. It had been reported that contingents of Alpha Draconis elites had appeared in other planes, as these appearances were relayed by those who had achieved multiplanar travel many thousands of generations earlier. It is widely assumed that the Alpha Draconian's ability to move in this manner preceded their subsequent removal from some other as yet unknown location in this system. Though Alpha Draconian vocalizations are difficult to understand or make any sense of and consist of rolling atonal guttural growls and clicking noises, they are loud and harsh to human ears. It could take a significant amount of time to utter advanced concepts to primitives. It is believed that this is partially why their clairvoyant abilities are so well refined. The warrior caste that unflinchingly followed the elite's orders rarely spoke, yet somehow they could communicate with each other non-vocally. When the soldiers did speak, it was quite short and poignant. Alpha Draconian society follows a more insect-like caste-based organization and a true reptile social structure, though they appear definitively reptilian and somewhat bird-like in all outward aspects. They all exhibit body armor of scales or plated hide, and in some cases, even feathering. These were apparently an evolutionary adaptation whose origins could only be guessed. They varied in colors, size, and build depending on their caste, which could range from very large, dark black and brown with yellow or red striping for the elites, to somewhat shorter and stocky, dark red or orange and black striping for the soldiers. The non-elite and non-warrior castes were all smaller in stature and armor, and considerably weaker, though still quite formidable in their own right. The lower castes consisted of scientists, engineers, and the rest of their minor industrial society, and these caste populations were similarly very small as well. Despite such differences, all empiric fleet movements contained predominantly individuals from the warrior castes and very small contingents of the lower castes, dependent on mission requirements. Though it is still currently unknown what the Seeker required to sustain them, it has been reported that they physically thrive on the intense fear they induce in their subjects, to the point of requiring the youngest conquered subjects as food. According to some reports, they prefer to feed on man's young as a delicacy. There are considerable documented reports of this somewhat macabre activity, the elite. The Seeker elite caste are the power holders and rarely venture from their homeworld, if ever, in order to occupy their literal political stranglehold and conduct empiric business from the central world called Alpha Draconis. This form of rule has held the empire together without question or internal contradiction, and throughout the compounded epics, no evolution from this form has been either attempted or even so much as hinted at. Due to the rarity of off-planet sightings of the elite, it has been said that only descriptions or images of them have actually been seen, as by and large, only the warriors and other lower caste Alpha Draconians have been observed in the general community. What descriptions have been advanced commonly refer to large leathery wings or exaggerated portions of vestigial wings. The ruling caste individuals have the appearance of notable age and wear, and their temperament is said to be utterly devoid of empathy or patience. They are obviously considerably larger than the rest of the castes, and their physical and mental power are suggested to be quite substantial. If anyone were, for some odd reason, to actually come into unprepared contact with any Alpha Draconis elite, it has been suggested this would be a very bad thing. Colonization 
All Seeker are extremely tough and adaptable to almost any environment and even the most difficult of conditions. Regardless of atmosphere, surface extremes, or even light though they prefer the subsurface environment for both their own low light sources and consistent temperatures. In most cases, Alpha Draconian colonies and outposts are set up within such a subsurface construct, and they only access the surface when required. It is for this reason that the difficulty of eradicating them from their foothold restricts such action. It has been suggested that some of their military stations are actually built within large asteroids or small dead planetoids, both throughout the Empire and remotely. Their fundamental method of colonizing a world with an existing race was to build the initial base of operations underground and expand it over time, crisscrossing the planet with subsurface tunnels and connecting their key tactical installations. Their tunneling technology is reported to be considerably advanced and can cover very long distances regardless of strata conditions in quite a short time. During the early periods of this work, a centralized political power was arranged with certain groups of individuals on the surface within a similar multi-layered caste hierarchy structure utilized by the Alpha Draconians, and these surface inhabitants were given absolute power though in fact, this was an illusion as the Seeker ultimately ruled. In most cases, this would prove to be an unsettling piece without a single shot being fired simply by the excessive technology wielded. If any arbitrary case of global opposition appeared, the underground work would simply increase and the tease of advanced technology would be withheld. The surface inhabitants would remain in their previous state, and the empire would expand. And grown it has. Imperial. Alpha Draconians are empiric in nature, sinister in motivation, and aggressive in character. It was thought they potentially threatened the stability of the entire universe because of these very tendencies. Though the empire only grew in very short spurts, they continued to drive on gradually, consistently, and without interruption. It is not truly known if they were ever really confronted during the tens of thousands of millennia up to this point due to the nature of their willingness to wield vast technologically advanced military resources in overwhelming fashion and even the slightest irritation. It has thus become generally accepted that rather than testing the water, it is best to stay out of it. They were generally avoided as long as they didn't overtly intrude on previously controlled or managed space. Their movements and activities appeared to be quite broad as they consistently moved into nearby inhabited systems, especially those of less evolved races, and immediate control would ensue. Once this occurred, the Alpha Draconian Empire would not, and apparently could not, be forced to release its hold. The Empire was vast and stretched from the Cygnus Arm to the Perseus Arm and up to the origins of the Orion Arm. Though their population is considerably smaller in size than one would expect for such an old society, nonetheless, their foothold and realm of influence are solid and particularly avoided. All colonized systems and outposts within this range are very closely managed, and any intrusion into Empire space, accidental or not, is ill-advised. The Empire's long-term stagnation also motivated them to spread throughout both new systems and what can only be described as unknowns. Otherwise, no intervention or intercession by the other races is known to have been attempted, yet a guarded eye was always maintained. It wasn't until the Alpha Draconian Empire reached the borders of neutral space that the scale of outside attention increased. For literally eons, the Empire's borders and neutral zones had been well-defined. Even the similarly advanced Dao race had relinquished territory to the Empire solely for peacekeeping purposes and other as yet unknown agreements. This is known already. It is not known if there was ever any confrontation between the Empire and the Dao, even though this culture was relatively as technologically advanced as the Empire, so the alleviation of any hostilities was agreed upon between both cultures. The Seeker also revealed a prolonged and vicious willingness to thrive, such that the Dao abdicated for intellectual reasons of survival, and their participation will come to fruition somewhat later. The relative abstinence of both committing to all-out warfare seems to have been relinquished due to nothing politically motivated but related to cultural adaptation. The Tao perception of superiority over the Alpha Draconian Empire and yet reticence to utilize it proved an unwillingness to confront militarily, which defined the long-term and disconcerting relationship between both cultures. Lyran Wars The Lyran War with man took place around 280 million years ago. The Alpha Draconian Empire invaded the initial Lyran systems for what can only be assumed to be either their fear of the Talman ongoing expansions that might one day threaten the Empire, or for simple resources. Yet to this day it is not really known if these were even the reasons. Whatever the initial reason was, the time frame was very short, and the first interstellar conflict between two technologically advanced races had begun, very simply referred to as an outright shooting war, and it began directly from Alpha Draconis. Massive Seeker fleets attacked the Lyran colonies with advanced and competent ferocity. At the time the Talman tribal colonies were not as well equipped for warfare on this scale, 
and it is not known whether or not a call for aid to the general community was made, or if any ever occurred. As more and more empiric fleets entered these systems, it became obvious that these colonies were in danger of annihilation. The tribes did manage to stave off immediate genocide by sacrificing what battle-capable ships they did have in order to allow several of the besieged colonies time to escape with what few survivors they could manage, though these combatant craft were ultimately lost. The damage to the Lyran worlds was massive, and the losses to life equally so. It has been suggested that entire planets were utterly lost, Outgunned by the vastly superior Alpha Draconian Armadas, the targeted colonials were forced to ultimately flee to the safer outlaying settlement homeworlds in the further reaches of Lyra away from the conflict. Some ultimately continued on to other colonies in the far-flung systems outside of Lyra. Some even returned to Syrian Asker. Note, it is also believed a tribe who left for Mersum from Lyra was accompanied by a fleet from Alpha Draconis as either an escort or effectively as prisoners since there appears to be somewhat an operative connection between the surviving Syrian Mersum Talmud tribe and an Alpha Draconian population also located in this system. Questions regarding the nature of this relationship are obvious. Once the hostilities had eventually subsided, it is not known whether any portions of the tribes remained on these devastated worlds or if Alpha Draconian outposts were established. In essence, the war was over nearly as quickly as it started. Due to the relative brevity of the confrontation, it is believed that there must have been severe damage to the Seeker fleets or man's further colonial destruction would have been guaranteed. Alpha Draconis may have technically won the war to this point, but the physical losses of attrition to the Empire proved to be more than they had expected, as now they had to reconsider maintaining the Empire with diminished numbers. In an attempt to quickly recoup the fleet, a very small portion of the Armada positioned itself on the border between Lyra and the Empire, and the remainder returned to Alpha Draconian shipyards to refit and rebuild. Also at this time, there was the clear waning of the Seeker from their reproductive gap. This led to fears that many of them would eventually perish from simple longevity. Though the warrior caste's population remained relatively large, their total generational life cycle appears to be extremely close to some minor form of entropy as well. The Alpha Draconis immediately set out on a mission to rebuild their reduced numbers after learning of their apparent losses during the war with man. It was decided that attempts should be made to increase their population by scientific hybridization in order to both defend, and wage any further challenges to the Empire. To this end, all expeditionary groups added contingents of scientists and the necessary laboratory equipment. 